as my second favorite Saints quarterback used to say, it's just pain. It was pain everywhere. <laughs> this is that Saints pod. Welcome. Uh, it's the three of us, four of us again. Uh, we got Miles joining in remote. We got Dave Rainey over here. We got Jacob with Big Easy Nation, and we got myself, Patty V, uh, from The Know, and who effing knows. Uh, welcome, you guys. Uh, we're going to break down a little bit of the Eagles game. Uh, we'll talk about the Falcons. This is very much a fan pod as well as an analytical pod at some time, so who knows what you're going to get. Uh, with that being said, yeah. I'll shut up. I'll drop it to Dave Rainey and let him run the show. What's going on, man? Uh, we have come back down to earth, fellas. The hot start was fun while it lasted. We are the 2-0 and o merchants. Um, what went wrong? What went wrong? That's where I'm going to start this. Eric McCoy going down, and then everything just went downhill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, mean, what else, Patty? <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that, I mean, that's the most succinct way you could possibly put that, right? Like, yes, that is what happened. Uh, I think there's some wrinkles to that, though, right? Um, Shoot, where to start? I mean, it definitely starts at Eric McCoy. I think, though, coming into that game, it was going to be a struggle. Uh, the way they were defending the run, I think you saw some wrinkles that you didn't see from other teams. And moving forward, I think it's going to be interesting to see how they overcome that, especially with the injuries on the offensive line. Um, it affected Derek Carr. You know, he couldn't really get any time to, to set his feet and throw. Play action was not there. They were in his face as soon as we tried to run it. Um, yeah, you couldn't run the ball. You couldn't throw the ball. The offense really sputtered. You got going at the end. Uh, you could ask what went wrong with the defense. I know people will say like the defense has to step up there at the end. Defense forced basically three turnovers. They forced two. They blocked the punt. Special teams. Uh, you get a couple fourth down stops. Like, good God! Like and the that, offense didn't score. They scored not score once. They scored once. once. No, 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 not off the turnovers. No, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you got to capitalize off of those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I mean that's that's what went wrong. You can't win a turnover battle and lose a game, and then look yourself in the mirror and think you should have won like something something needs to get going so yeah. go ahead miles yeah um <laughs> i was looking at a crazy stat and um it was the rushing uh it was like the rushing stats for the game and i think Derek carr had the second most rushes which was two rushes and yeah, I, jamal williams jamal williams had like one rush and it was like negative one yards or something yeah. Um, and didn't Philadelphia? And I just like, look at that and you go, but you just look at that and you go, like, what? What are we doing? What? What are we doing? And we and we went into the game knowing Taysom Hill is out. We're gonna lose that, you know, question mark factor, you know, from defenses knowing like, okay, what's Taysom doing? Like, is he gonna be a quarterback? Is he about to run the ball? Is he a tight end? Is he just blocking? You know, you lose that sort of mystery out of him, and it just looks like. You know, to me, watching the game, it looked like Clint didn't know what to do without Taysom. Like, is Taysom that important to this team that if we don't have him, we sort of lose, you know, all those motions. We sort of lose, like, our sense of, you know, direction when it comes to the pass because you also look at the receiving stats and Chris Olave, only six receptions. <laughs> and I know he didn't get targeted that much. And I think I saw a stat that said Rashid had zero. Uh, I don't know if he didn't play. Did he not play? No, he played. He played, right? No, he played. <laughs> That's what I was, I was like. I'm looking at the stats, and, you know, the eye test tells you mostly everything you need to know, you know, if you're really, you know, into the game. But just looking at the stats, just let me know. I'm not tripping. It was that bad of an offensive game. Like, why is Derek Carr the second, you know, statistic when it comes to under rushing yards and, for the New Orleans Saints. Like, what are we doing? It's just some of the things that I saw, which um, sort of led me to a depressive state that day. It was a pretty <laughs> bad day. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough game to sit through. I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't even – this was kind of my hot take afterwards. I don't even think the defense played that well. Can you Can you say a defense played well when they gave up almost 500 total yards of offense? Like – the only reason they didn't give up more points is because Siriati is an idiot and decided not to take more points. This game shouldn't have been close. Like they should have won by double digits. So it's like, can you, can you, yeah, they stopped them on fourth down when they got the opportunity, like good for them. But also you let them drive up and down the field at will almost besides the two turnovers you had. Like they couldn't stop them from anything. 
they let Dallas Goddard have a career day and like go crazy. And it was the same play over and over a little crossing route, like three yards away from the lot of scrimmage and just nobody was like covered up. Yeah, it was, it was so frustrating to watch. And then they kept trying to run the ball to the right side. Like, I know you can't only run the ball to one side. Like that's not realistic. You have to try to run both ways, but they couldn't do anything to the right side. And they just kept, kept trying. And it, like all that creativity, it felt like we had the first two weeks of the season. It felt like it was gone. And I'm kind of with you, Miles. I'm wondering if Taysom might be the key to all of that. Uh, you know, it, it made it seem like it. And we also didn't, you know, when we talk about they only ran it to the right, they didn't do any like, you know, reverses to like a, you know, a Rashid Shahid maybe to, you know, spice it up a little bit. They didn't do anything that you would think, okay, our guy Clint, this guy has a mind that a lot of offensive coaches don't have. After our first two games, that's basically what the fan base is saying. Like, there's not another offensive coordinator in the league messing with our offensive coordinator. And then we see this game, and he looks like, you know, a middle school coach that just gave his offensive, you know, players 10 plays in a playbook and said, hey, you know, make something out of this, guys. And they were just like, uh, you know, coach, we didn't really practice this stuff. That's what it felt like. Um, and then, to your point, the defense didn't do that good. They did well in the circumstances, I guess you can say. But then when you look at the, you know, the, the, the statistics, Jalen Hurts, he had like 200 and, what, 90-something yards, 80-something yards. And then he had, you know, he had his plays outside of the pocket. And then you get a Saquon Barkley, you know, really sort of pulling the game out of our way. And you look back and you say, hey, the defense, they had turnovers, yeah, but that's not a sustainable way to play football by hoping that the other side just makes stupid mistakes. Because in my opinion, the Eagles just left points off the board. Um, that's not going to work versus the Kansas City. And I know they're not playing their best ball, but they're still the Kansas City Chiefs. Like they still have a phenomenal quarterback. We're not going to be able to sustain, like, we have, we have fundamental problems that I think we talked about um, when we were saying, hey, that second half when, we, when they let up and they didn't look like the offense couldn't run, you know, fluently. I think that's exactly what we saw, offense that couldn't get the first down. Um, and when Derek Carr is under pressure, like we saw, he still might, you know, be that guy that makes people want to smoke a cigarette outside. That's <laughs> sort of what it looked like. Yeah, I I wonder how much of it, like the lack of creativity, was because of McCoy being out. Like it it has to play into it, right? Like There's a, a few factors for sure. I, I think you're they're playing you a little different. Um, obviously Taysom's out. You're probably game playing a little different. McCoy goes down. You're trying to protect yourself. Um, I don't know where the thought goes from there. I mean, you took a couple shot plays. There's a couple things they tried, uh, and they just couldn't hit them. It, it was just frustrating football, to be honest. It wasn't predictive. I'll give them that. And it made sense. So it wasn't like watching a Pete Carmichael offense. But, uh, yeah, it was It was just frustrating just watching them just bang their head against the wall over and over. Yeah. Well, I know that, like, um, Kubiak has said, like, their scheme is they're going to commit to the run whether it works or not. Like, they're going to do it and for better or worse, which is fine, I guess. But, like, sometimes we didn't see – I feel like we didn't see a single screen pass – like, we didn't see any of those plays where it's, like, running through the air, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? There was a few. Yeah. He just – there was one. I think he had to throw it at Kamara's throw feet. Throw it at the feet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, was just, it just didn't work. Yeah. He – it was ugly. It kudos was ugly. kudos to the Eagles defense, though, man. They have the talent, and that's what I kept telling people. People were asking me during the game, are the Eagles good? And I'm like, listen, if you ask their coach, no. Because <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's thinking. Happens. Or maybe he thinks they're just that damn good. They can do whatever they want. Uh, but they've got a lot of talent on that defense, and they match up very well with just about everybody in the league. If they want to, they can have a good game. I don't want to be that guy either, but I definitely told you know people so. I was like, from my memory, they still have Jalen Carter, like year two. He yeah. should be getting you better. Told us that. Um, and he once you know Eric McCoy got out, he had a field day, and they mm -hmm. made Zach Bond look like an all star. Like they made him look 
like a phenomenal. And I'm not saying he's not, you know, a good linebacker, but he's not some all pro linebacker. And they he made him on the field. outside just look like he can stop a a run from you know whatever running backs in front of him. It's just hard to watch, man. And that's these are one of those games that okay, both teams are gonna play ass, like they're not playing good, but can we make it out of the mud? And I just we didn't see the Saints try their will their way. And then when you know Derek Carr has the opportunity, because if we were just putting it, you know, if we've been real about the situation, he had an opportunity to really let the city know y'all about to apologize. Like he had that opportunity and <laughs> he throws the interception. It's I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, defend him. You can't I'm gonna defend him. I wanna jump in here. I wanna defend him. You asked him to do it basically twice in under four minutes. He had just walked him down. He had just taken us down, scored a touchdown, and then our defense gave up a third and 16, and the rest is history. To be, Yeah, but you do have to, like, you got to know the situ- situation in at the end. I I'm, I'm think I lean more towards your side on this, Patty. Like, I'm not going to trash car completely, but he had a whole minute. Like, you got to know at that point, you just throw, like, you don't force a pass to the middle of the field into True. double coverage when you got a whole minute to go like that's one you got to just he's he's done that he did that throughout the game he's been you've seen him he he rolls out there's nothing there he throws it at the lineman's feet like he shows he knows when to do that and i think he just he just got frazzled at the end of the game there and it it's it's tough i'm we have two games of him being great in this system so i'm not going to all of a sudden turn back and be like oh he's right He's back to what he was. I got to see that last year's Derek Carr a little more um, before I do that. Jacob, do you think there are any positive takeaways from this game? Um, I mean, <laughs> no, besides <laughs> That's being fair. stressed the whole game and pacing around, you know, nervous Yeah. in the last part <laughs> of the game. And- I got one. <laughs> I got one. If if nobody else does, I will I will call a call a spade a spade, which the Eagles fans don't like. Defense is physical, man. They fly to the ball, they finish plays. The whole team is. They fly to the ball, they finish plays. You play the New Orleans Saints, you're going to be in a dog fight. It might not work. Like you, I, we mentioned a couple of times, they just committed to the run and they were banging their head against the wall. But guess what? They were banging up against each other, right? Like it was a lot of physical, physical football, whether on offense or defense. And and I'll I'll ride with that. I like that. Yeah, I don't I don't know yeah. if uh this is like a takeaway just from this game or not, but I don't know that you'll see another defensive line that talented the rest of the year unless you run into the Eagles again. Like I know KC has a solid line, but the the Eagles are stacked on the on the line, man. Like I don't know that you'll have that kind of trouble again. Yeah. Like you play the Rams, but they don't have Aaron Donald anymore. Um the, the, like the Chiefs have Chris Jones, the Browns have Miles Garrett, but like they don't have. I don't know that there's any other team that has them across the board like that. Yeah, those are. I mean, those are all outside. Yeah, or just one guy, right? Like, I mean, we saw that already. Right. We saw that with the the Cowboys, who oh my god, look terrible right now. Yeah. Um, I th- <laughs> Dave and I when we stepped in this room today, they were like, "You watched the game?" I'm like, "Yeah, I saw a little bit." He's like, "Cowboys are pretty bad, huh?" I was <laughs> like, "Yeah, I'm kind of curious if we were that good or if they're just that damn bad." This is, yeah. Miles, you look like you were going to say something before I, I kind of cut you off there. Uh, Sorry. I, I just wanted to say – no, it's all good. I just wanted to say, um, for me personally, and I understand where you're coming from when you say they were physical, but that comes that's, – that's just sort of part of DA's, you know, DNA when it comes to defense. Mm-hmm. And we said, hey, like, that's the type of defense they are, but that allows for big opportunity plays. And – You know, I want them to be physical, but also that's sort of like the bare minimum that I'm asking from an NFL defense. Like, and I I know it's like hard to be physical in this, you know, this culture of the NFL when they're, you know, they're calling all these crazy stuff, but I need them to be physical, but I also need them to be smart and not let a drag from a tight end end the damn game for us. Because that is unacceptable. Yeah. Just win. That, thank you. Thank you. Because that is just uh, that's just unacceptable. That's something that you see in high school. And then the next day, your coach makes you run till you die. Like that's that's what that was. You let a drag beat you. That's unacceptable. They were letting like, the same drag you know, beat them all day, all day long. 
It didn't matter the coverage either. There were different no. coverages that they had, and that drag just kept getting open. The problem was with the man when that drag really beat you, you just not you're not paying attention. You're not you're not talking to your teammates, and you're running into each other, and that's just busted coverage. And listen, if they let that happen again, I know we're not talking about Atlanta yet, but you let that happen this week, and Kyle Pitts is catching open passes like that, you're not catching them like you caught <laughs> Dallas got. <Goddard. laughs> but Atlanta's say, better than the Eagles. I'm gonna say it right now. This is this. Not they're not any. I know there's a rivalry. They're not, not a team either. to like just push to the side. Like this team can I'm, really make us yeah. look like. That's two like, different conversations. I was gonna say I'm okay with that second statement. The yeah. first statement, they're not better than the Eagles. Yeah. What you were gonna say, Jacob? <laughs> I say a couple like spotlights, player spotlights. I give is Alante Taylor and Carl Granderson. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Alante is like the player of the year on defense right now. Like I don't even know that there's a close second at the moment. I mean, you could say Carl Granderson's a close second. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's Carl, Carl Granderson is. He's, but like, Alante is just flying all over the field right now, man. He's got four like, sacks too. Yeah, kinda... and you might say that about Tyron right now. The amount of turnovers yeah, he's that's just right, making. Like, that's true too. It's hard. It's hard to say like Tyron's not having a you know, you know, all pro type of year from where we from where we're at right now. But you know, I, I mean, we see some good things out of the defense. You just really hope that. Um, DA instills some type of, you know, I don't want to say confidence, but you just hope that he adapts to the situations because that's something that I also think is coaching. Like, hey, guys, we're getting beat by the drag. We need something there, you know, to protect us from big plays happening off of that because it seems like they keep getting us there. That's just something that I would like DA to throw out as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we, we touched on McCoy being out. A few times it seems like he's going to be out like six to eight weeks according to all the reports just pain yeah is that a season derailing type of injury or do you th- have faith in this scheme to to cover it up i don't think it is i think they'll adjust yeah you gotta have faith the faith the faith um yeah no I, I definitely have faith i think they'll be fine it, it's gonna i mean they're gonna have to adjust they're gonna have to get creative uh, but I, from what I've seen so far, I mean, I, I think that I, I think Kubiak can figure it out. You got to get Taysom back. If I see Taysom come back and then they're still looking awful, then I'm going to question some things. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. The three boy, was it Lucas Patrick? Who, who came in the center right after that? Lucas it was like, Patrick. Yep. I was going to say, it shocked me. I was like, damn, they just moved him over from guard. Who's beat. coming in a guard? Yeah, well, you know. I was getting beat like a drum. Listen, <laughs> give him a break. <laughs> Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. He's it, got a week now to be coached. I saw up. something that said that they should keep him at guard and move uh, Cesar Ruiz to center. I don't know how much better that'll be. Yeah. But, you know, I'm with whatever scheme works for the best of, you know, the team. If, you know, if he's going to be getting beat by defensive tackles like that, then maybe we give somebody else a try. I mean, Ruiz played center in college. Yeah. Like, he was a center. We drafted him as a center. He came out, and we immediately put him at guard because we had Eric McCoy. So, yeah, I mean, you could see it. But it, it took him this long to, like, become, like, a competent guard. Yeah. If you throw him back at center, does that ruin everything he's done at guard? Like, who who knows? I so. Yeah, I mean, you got to – I don't I don't know what they're seeing in practice, to be yeah. honest. Like, can he do it? It's, you know, can I think, he – see the protections can he like there's certain things that center's gonna need to be able to do right that yeah. a guard doesn't necessarily have to do but should be able to do i think you keep him at guard as long as you possibly can and if it just doesn't work out with somebody else at center then you you give it a shot um but also he's on his second day of it uh did not practice so Mm. <laughs> that's that's a scary. What's, his, what's his injury i saw he got banged up but i thought he was uh, fine it's it's a knee he's he came right back in the game he yeah. missed one snap he said it was just a scare so maybe they're just kind of letting Protect it rest up a little bit you know it's a, it's a long injury list right now but it's it's a lot of like Let, let's talk about that though um yeah go through it because there's only like two that i'm actually worried about yeah you know there was uh nick had said that you know we would all be concerned when the injury came out Turns out it's like a lot of uh, minor stuff. It was Derek Carr was a groin injury, but he practiced full. Taysom practiced full yesterday and today, which is great. Mm -hmm. Uh, DeMarco Jackson uh, limited. Kalen Saunders is limited, so that'll be another addition to the D-line. Landon Young was a foot limited, full practice today, so he seems good. Alante full practice today. DeMario, two days, did not practice. Maybe that's a vet thing with the hamstring. Uh, Alvin came back today. 
Caesars, two days, no practice. Harry, no practice. Cedric Wilson was limited. Harry? Bro, what the hell is A.T. Perry you banged up? I wonder for? if they're going to finally play him this week. He ain't even practicing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was so. That was my next. My next topic was well. Actually, my top next question was going to be what was your level of concern at overall with the team. But the next thing I, I had written down was they they desperately need another weapon, man. Like I think we saw it. Like you just talked about. Like Shahid might as well have not been on the field this week. And granted, there's no Taysom this week, but. I just I don't think you can only rely on your two receivers the entire season. I want to I want to give Shahid some love real quick. We can certainly talk about needing another guy, and I think we do. Shahid had a shot play in the first quarter, I think it was, or the second quarter, and everybody's like, "Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. I can't believe he dropped that ball." If you go back and watch, it should have been a damn touchdown. The DB from the Eagles played great defense. First of all, yeah. especially the way you're coached, he had his arm pinned, and he had it pinned in a way where the ref can't see it, obviously, but. It, man had one arm trying to trying to haul it in in a in a bang bang play like dropped on a dime i mean you'll see those land so i'm not too concerned with shahid not showing up i mean it is what it is but um i thought olave had a good day i thought he had a good game i would have liked to see more out of the tight end position like i don't know what is going on like yeah. foster moreau seems to be our guy which doesn't make sense to me i thought he's more of a blocker like yeah he catches some here and there i want to know where Juwan is like right I just I don't know. I don't know. Uh Triplet made a good point the other day. I was watching their show and he he said that he thought the tight ends would get production just based off of being left open. Yeah. So often. Like between the other between the two receivers being as good as they've been, Alvin out the backfield, Taysom, like the tight ends should just naturally get some looks and they're not even getting getting those. Now there was a play this game with Juwan was at the last play of the game, actually Juwan's wide open in the middle of the field. And Derek went deep to uh, Shahid, but I mean that's a, a pressure situation. So maybe there's a couple of plays we're not seeing, but you would think a few catches a game at least from somebody. But we're getting nothing out of the position. Like at this point, put Hulker in there and see what he can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> these other two are not it. Like Jawan, we've been waiting for this Jawan breakout for a few years now, and it, it doesn't seem like it's coming. I mean, personally, I don't even care about the tight ends as much. Give the ball to Chris Olave a little bit more. Like, we see how good Chris Olave is. Why is he not getting at least three to four more targets a game? Um, I think he's, you know, just drastically under-targeted. But, and I don't want to say forget the tight ends, because I think Foster Moreau does have, like, hands that you could really count on. And especially in the red zone, we've seen it. You know, he's a guy that can go up, get the ball, fall down, you know, safely. Um, I'm still a little bit concerned about Jawan. Um, and it's just really the physicality of the game because he was a wide receiver. They put him at tight end. They turned him into a tight end. But is he going to block like a tight end? Is he too big now to get open as fast as he used to? Um or does it just come down to, you know, Derek Carr making a play and seeing that they're open? I'm not I'm not exactly sure about that, but I definitely think we need to scheme them a little better. Um, I think they could take a little bit from Taysom Hill and how they sort of put him at tight end. It's not always it doesn't always have to be some huge play. You know, three yards on a first down is positive yards. You could get your tight end, you know, real quick off of, you know, whatever quick drag <laughs> shit you can put them on a drag um but i think they just need a game plan that a little bit better i don't think that they lack the the skills to make you know plays that a basic tight end needs we, i don't think we're looking for a hall of fame tight end if we are we're probably gonna have to draft that we're not getting hall of fame out of any of these tight ends but i don't think that you know it's out of the realm of possibility that we can get some good production out of these tight ends I, th I think they're just missing like that receiver or anybody that can just get open quick off the line. Like Olave has definitely shown some like another step in his game this year through like he's blocking more. Uh, but he he is somebody that he runs a little bit deeper routes. Right. It takes some, a couple seconds for him to get open. Shahid, we know what Shahid is. Granted, I think Shahid is an underrated like intermediate receiver as well. 
he's not just a deep threat, but they're missing like that big body. And I don't want to like say Michael Thomas, like that they're missing Michael Thomas, but they're missing that type of receiver, right? That can just, hey, we might have called you might call him slant boy, but there's a place for those three yard slants all game long, right? Like somebody that can just get you a quick three, four yards. Feels like they're missing that. Maybe they can scheme something up for Chris and Shahid off of a wide receiver screen, something like that. But I feel like, and that's where A.T. Perry, I think, would fit in. Apparently, he's not doing what needs to be done to get on the field, though. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for bringing up Michael Thomas. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. I don't care how much people <laughs> you know, hate it or get tired of me saying it, but this team could definitely use Michael Thomas, and he definitely deserves, in my opinion, to be seeing some PT on that field. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just good, just, just, just bringing back real nostalgic memories, man. Like Michael Thomas, Elvin Kamara, Taysom Hill. This is what we're supposed to be doing, guys. I don't, I don't even think. You know what? They, I don't even think it needs to be a big body guy like Mike. It just needs to. It could be a Hunter Renfro that can just get open on a short, quick route, and and that's it. Somebody that can just be like a little check down merchant. And I don't know. It just feels like they're missing something. I don't think you can go all year with only two receivers. What was my overall point? <laughs> That's fair. I think a lot of their the sets they're running though, they're not really coming out with a lot of wide receivers. They're running a lot of too tight. They're but, running a lot of. But is that because of who they have? I don't think would so. My, would be my only question. I think it's because of what they want to do and the type of team they want to be. That's fair. But I mean, I think if you, you can't tell me that if they had a third guy, sure. Like if AT Perry was good, they would. I feel like they would come out with some three receiver sets, and I don't know. Yeah, it, it just feels like they're missing. Well, it's early in the season. We might see him do something later. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like I'm not giving up on AT Perry. It's just to this point, he's he's not on the field, and it doesn't. You know, they're saying it's injury, but it it doesn't seem like it is. It's crazy. We we're saying he's gonna be like wide receiver too. Yeah, you know, last off season. They also could use another running back t- with a little bit of speed to him. Uh, Kendrick Miller coming back soon. So hopefully yep, well, that that's, could... that's where I'm going with that. Yep. <laughs> is he coming back? Because Buddy is the spectator of the year right now. <laughs> like, I don't know. We don't need to. We don't need to crap on any of the players. Let's not. Let's not do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think Dennis Allen's crapped on him enough. Yeah. I don't need to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just uh, hope he can get healthy. All right. Well, going into Atlanta this week, so it's Falcons hate week. Um, thoughts. Overall thoughts of going in this game. Are you concerned? Not, you know, it's kind of like what kind at? of team are you going to get, though? Because they beat Philly, they lost to Pittsburgh, did and they, then they beat barely. Philly? I know they beat Philly, but did they beat Philly or did Philly beat them? Then they barely lost to KC. Yeah. Yeah. They look so, good against KC. I, I get that. I, to Miles's credit before, they may not be better than the Eagles. They're not a team that is just like they're not the Falcons from last year. Sure. They're a better team yeah. for sure. I, think I don't care what y'all say. They better than the Eagles. They beat the Eagles game. To, okay. And, and, and they beat us. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's easy to hate. It's easy to hate them. I hate them just like everybody else. I think that dumbass old logo that they're doing is garbage. <laughs> and I hope the Saints pull out the color rush ones and, you know, really do their, you know, the their, their thing versus the, the Falcons. But, you know, the Falcons got them boys right now. And Kirk Cousins, I know it's easy to, like, hate on him and stuff like that but he's a quarterback i'd I'd say at least during the regular season he will get the job done he will beat your team it might not be like the best or prettiest but he'll beat your team he's a quarterback that guys can be like hey that's my quarterback um i just hope that we get a battle um i hope Derek carr really shows out and you know if this team's gonna win elman kamara's gonna have to show out as well so i'm really excited for this week but they, the the Falcons are good, man. I I hate to say it, but they're good. They're not a they're not a garbage team. I would say they're not an elite team, but I would say they are definite above average team right now. The way they're playing, like it doesn't matter what we what year you get them, they're always going to play as tough. So right, right. yeah. Uh, Kirk so Cousins, always, in case yep. anybody was interested, five games against the Saints in his career, he's two and three. Mm-hmm. Uh. Averages 71% completion percentage, 313 yards, and two and a half touchdowns a game against the Saints. 71 is crazy. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's Kirk Cousins. That's his style of football. Like, he's he's a smart quarterback, right? Like, he's going to play good football. That's one thing you can count on. Like, is he going to fold sometimes in big moments? Yes. Uh, but he's going to be in a lot of big moments because he's good enough to be there. So, you know, we'll see. I agree with you, Miles. I do. I know I was sitting here saying, you know, the Eagles are better. I do think the Falcons are a good football team. I think they're playing really good football. I think they run the ball really well. I think they've They've, for me, my, I've got questions around their their receiving core. I know people love Drake London. I personally love Darnell Mooney. It's a lot of small guys, not a lot of guys that are that are going to get a lot of separation uh, physically. Not a physical group. So if you can beat them up a little bit, I think you got an advantage. And our DBs are pretty physical, so I feel good about that. Um, I agree. They are quick. So I mean, if you let them get open and sit down in a zone, they're going to get some rack yards or some yak yards. Um, rack yak, same thing. Um, yeah, and the defense. <laughs> and the defense is uh is talented you know what can you say they go out and they get judon they um pick up justin simmons they were already pretty talented at the defensive back position still got jesse bates yeah so yeah it's gonna be a tough game um i'm not sleeping on them at all i think they're a good football team i just want to beat their brains in <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, yeah it, 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 it all depends on whether they can how they can fix this O-line, whether they can fix the O-line. If, if Kubiak can fix the O-line and the offense just doesn't look just completely lost out there, then the Saints have a chance. Like they're, if, the, if the O-line is working, I think the Saints are a better team. If, the, if they can't hold up, that's going to be a wrap because we've seen it. Carr, Derek Carr under pressure it has just hasn't been, hasn't been good. And but like what like what quarterback is great under pressure like that, the the elite of the elite. So if they if they can't protect them, then it, it's going to be a wrap. I think it's it really is that simple. Another every, we talk about every week the cliches right <laughs> of of football, and it starts there. Right, I would say protect the football, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I I will say they are like they're he yeah. they're protecting the football on offense so far this year mm-hmm. defense and defense is getting them extra opportunities so they're doing all the right things last week it's kind of just a weird it's hard to really judge last week when mccoy goes down that early because you don't know how much it threw off a game plan. you know i it, i just it just came to me the one thing i was thinking last game which i didn't have it in notes in front of me because i didn't put anything down uh time of possession i oh, feel yeah. like killed us last week that was a massive massive issue last week i mean it felt like we didn't have the ball it, well, that kind of goes to what I was saying. Where the the defense did they play well because they let they let Philly control the game on offense, yeah. right? Like, sure, you didn't give up the points, but like they did control the ball. Like, if you're looking at just strictly time of possession, that's on the defense too. Yeah, as well, much as the offense, it's on the offense going three and out too. But yeah, I mean, I agree, and I but I think the reason I brought it up is I think that's that's also going to be important in this game because I, I think that the Falcons, in a way are somewhat built similar to the Eagles. Like their defense is, is very athletic. Uh, they're fast um, and they can run the football and they got a good tight end. Go ahead. I will say one thing. I did see a thing on social media. So don't, you know, take my word for it, but it was like the Falcons, they haven't had a lot of sacks this season or something like that. Um, and I think it was like, they only had one sack this season. I don't know how true that is, but it was something along the lines that they didn't have a lot of sacks this season. And yeah. if they're not going to be pressuring Derek Carr a lot, then I like our odds. If he's not getting pressured crazy, then I, I love our odds. Uh, and, and also, you, you said it goes down to the basics of football, you know, at the line. Yeah, uh, if the Falcons' old line can hold up and let Bijan and uh, what's the uh, backup, Ellinger, uh, if, if they have a game, then we might be in trouble because – I'm not sure if it was last year, but uh, I, I just remember the Falcons just running it down our throats. Pause. But, yeah, like I just remember them like killing us with the running game uh, last year. And, correct die. me if I'm wrong. They have three total sacks on the year. They have two players with one and a half sacks. How many pressures do they have? Because I feel like the games I've seen, they've gotten some good pressure. Uh, I mean, you play against Hertz. It's hard to bring him down. You play Mahomes last week. Who's going to get rid of the ball? It's hard to tell you because ESPN doesn't want to give me that. Uh, that gotcha. That's that's my first thought. Is I feel like they it's it's more of pressures. I watched him pressure the crap out of Hertz, uh, which led to a few turnovers, but they never got him on the ground. 
Also, the Eagles O line, they haven't been doing too well either this year. So I don't know if much of that back to that plays, but that is another thing to talk about. The Eagles also lost one of their best O linemen yeah. in that game early in the game, and they still managed to do whatever they wanted on offense. So it's hard to use that as an excuse for the Saints. Granted, the Saints O line was already hanging by a thread coming into the year. Yeah. And the Eagles not as much, but they also they were able to overcome it where the Saints weren't. So it's hard to use that as an excuse. That's all I'm saying. Damn it, Mickey. <laughs> That's all I got. I was I was trying to find the pressures for you, but uh that's all right. I just, you know, I'm just going to chalk it up to I feel like they had some, and we need to watch out for it. <laughs> Fair. We always, we always do. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Always do. These these guys, they're, they're all professionals, and it's like you said, it's a rivalry. I went to Holy Cross. I remember the Holy Cross Jesuit games, man, and it don't matter how bad or good a team was. Like, we were going to, like, knock somebody's head off just off of pure <laughs> hatred. And, and, you know, sometimes that's what football is about, just pure hatred. Let's go kill each other on the field, and let's see who's, you know, man enough to finish this game with more points on the board. And that's what we love about this Saints versus Falcons game. Uh, I just hope that, you know, this game, you know, Derek Carr can grab his sack and do a little dance and we can really win this one. Five hurries on the year. Oh, that's not as much as I thought. Okay. Nope. What's the difference between hurries and pressure? Now I want to pick apart stats. I'll do that later. I don't know. <laughs> this is a pro football reference. Gotcha. They're advanced stats in case you're wondering. Ooh. Uh, that's all I had written down. Uh, you got anything else you want to talk about this week? Or you want to wrap this up? Just after the Falcons. I'm actually uh, praying for anybody out there. That there looks looks like there's a Category 5 storm about to roll through there. Uh, it won't be a 5 in Atlanta, but it's definitely going that direction. So going to be a lot of rain and, and crazy storms coming through right before the game. So hopefully yeah. practice is okay. The Saints travel's okay. All that stuff. Anybody going out there for the game, be safe. You know, scream who that in the Falcon fans' face. That's it. For sure. For sure. And it all with some Britney Spears. Do you, do you want to end with our, our touchdown predictions you know like we do every week? Uh, yeah. I was close. L- listen, when we were, I, I said Saints defense last week, when they kept getting the turnovers, I was like, oh, I might be in business here. <laughs> yeah, we needed it to win yeah. the damn game. Yeah. I think I took Saquon last week, so technically mine hit. You, You're welcome. I think all three weeks you may have taken someone from the other team. No, I took Taysom <laughs> once and he got hurt, so I'll never do that again. Can everybody Never. give me just one thing that I should bet on for this game that they're just like, you know what? You're going to make some money if you bet this leg. Okay. I mean, I'm going B. John Robinson. This is becoming a trend for me, so I'm doing it. <laughs> Chris Olave get a touchdown. It's, it's okay. a touchdown. Chris, B. John, and what you got for me? Whatever Alvin's rushing line is, the over. Ooh, really? Take the over. Yeah. Ooh. Alvin likes to try to show out against Atlanta. True. Okay. I'm going to try that and I'll let y'all know how that works. All right. But if it loses, you didn't get it from me. Yeah. This is <laughs> not betting advice, by yeah. the way. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to Alvin for my, my touchdown score. I like Going chalk. I like it. I like it. Um, any other thoughts? I had a, I actually had a, a conversation. How long are we running? I don't want to run this over. 38 minutes. You got time. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Closing out, I guess we could have this discussion and see where it goes. The hit on uh, Devontae Smith. Eagles fans seem to really be in an uproar on Twitter about this this late hit, uh, which I put in air quotes. Uh, I like to give credit to people in their feelings. So I, I want to hear if anybody has thoughts on this or if people just think this is wild that people are upset about it. This feels like a time for Miles to shine. Go for it. Open for it. Man, it's, it's football, man. Like, what what do you, what are we doing? Like, shut up, get to the next play. Like, stop all that whining. That's how I. That's a, that's just how I was raised on football. Like, you get hit if you get hit late. You know, fight the other team. What, what right. Are you, what are you on Twitter or social media for with all that yapping? Like, bro, you're not even on the field. Let them let them handle it like they want to handle it. If somebody got a late hit, let they let your team settle it on the field about it. Like. That's just how I feel about it. Bad things happen all the time in football. People get hit when they're out of bounds. Quarterbacks get 
grab when they're under the pile. Bad things happen when you're on the field. It's not a, a good time if, you know, you're on the field and you're in a real physical game. That's just what it is. It's football. I don't like all of this. Um, and I'm not saying I don't want people to be safe. Obviously, I don't want anybody to get any crazy injuries. Um, but to be honest, I you, you say other things in the locker room. If you've ever been in the football locker room, things get wild, man. Football's a wild <laughs> place, man. I've just... Yeah. All this kindness on the field, take it away. I'm done with it, bro. That's, that's all I got to say. I, I will say we keep – I know Patty threw it in air quotes. We keep referring to it as a late hit. And that's where I, that's where this whole thing stops with me. It wasn't a late hit. You want to be mad at somebody, you'd be mad at the refs for not blowing the whistle after he was pushed back five yards. I agree. If the whistle's not blown, why on earth would the, he not try to go hit him? And to that note, because he hit him, it was a fumble. It was a fumble. Which didn't get looked at. So if anybody's going to be mad on that play, it should be us. Because it was a fumble. Yeah. And then they get mad at Peyton Turner for jumping on him afterwards because it was a fumble. That's why he jumped on him. And they're trying to say he spit on him. He clearly spits on the ground next to him. Like, <laughs> it's it's a whole – it's so frustrating. Like, you're mad. Like, tell, Devon, tell Devontae Smith to get his weight up. I don't know what to tell you. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I did. What, 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 uh, what I did Steve Pitt used to say? Ice up, son. Ice up, son. <laughs> Ice up. Yeah, I didn't Ball get it. Ball up top. Ball up top. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't realize Eagles fans could be so soft. I guess every fan could be so soft, right? It's Twitter. People say things. They like to troll. Um, yeah, it was a it was a live football fumble. I felt bad because my wife is like, can they do that? Can they can they hit him like that? I was like, the whistle didn't blow. That's a fumble. Why is it not our ball? I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah. what is happening? <laughs> this should be our ball. It. She's like, like, he's knocked out. I'm like, I, I'm sorry? <laughs> right. Like, listen, Damar Hamlin died and the play kept going. You know what I mean? Like, uh, these things these things happen. Like, I, I felt bad for – like, I'm sitting there with Eagles fans behind me at the game, and I'm like, this sucks. Like, I don't want to see him get hurt right. like that. But these fans on Twitter are starting to make me so mad <laughs> that, right. I'm, that I'm like – I don't know if I like the Vontaze Smith anymore. I feel bad. I felt no remorse. He should have never went to Alabama. Oh, oh. I don't have those kind of ties. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, care, about I don't care about the LSU but guys. So. I respect if you're from the boot, go to LSU or Tulane. That's how I feel. So it, it was it was smoke when it it was smoke when he wasn't wearing black and gold, bro. It, and it was smoke when he wasn't wearing purple and gold. Well, purple and yellow. But yeah. that's fine. But it's I, football is a physical sport. To, like just to put a bow on it, like we said, I think the whole argument from them stops when you see that the whistle wasn't blown. Right. It's not like, is our player just supposed to be like, ah, oh, they haven't blown the whistle, but he looks yeah. like he's going to be down. And then he takes off running and you're like, oh, they should have blew the whistle. And then I'm mad. No, right. screw that. I'm, I'm more frustrated than the Eagles fans is that they <laughs> that they didn't review the play. <laughs> right. I don't know, man. Live ball, play through the whistle. Right. Did you play? My, I'm, I felt bad. I hate being that guy on Twitter. When people say stuff like that, I literally just want to be, did you play football? Have you played football? No? Shut up. Like <laughs> every time, you know, the other thing is it's because it's the Saints. Yeah, like anytime the Saints do anything that can be perceived as a potential dirty play, it's it gets blown up every single year. Like, you, I, there's that time maybe last year, year before, where Cam Jordan's trying to punch the ball out like extra hard and they start calling yeah. us dirty because he's throwing punches. Like, anytime it's the Saints, we get that we got that rep now. Thanks, Sean Payton. But if it's the Seahawks, if it's the yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers, if it's, mm. if it's the Ravens, if it's Philly, you know, like, it like, oh, that's just hard nosed football. But if it's anything in New Orleans, it's like, yeah. look at these right. goddamn fools, right. man. If it's the Ravens, they're like, that's just good old Ravens football. <laughs> and Dominic and Sue can grab somebody's face mask and pull their head backwards. I'm talking years ago, obviously. And yeah. like, yeah, people talk about them and they just let it go. And then the Saints dive on a fumble and, you know. Also, we don't we don't need the Eagles fans to pretend like their players are. Uh, it's football. Are you know there's a player on every team that is trying to hurt somebody on that other team, and there should be. And I hate saying it like that, but like that's it's the sport. Your team has Jalen Carter. Like I don't want to hear anything oh, about yeah. All right. anything. Like that's it. That's where I'm going to end that. Okay. Can, I, can I end? This is my last thing that I need to say. Mm -hmm. Um, just off of pure hatred, and you know. <laughs> Uh, CJ, he's a goofy. Um, everything he says <laughs> post game, I'd really slap him in his face about that. <laughs> I don't care if I ever get famous and he sees this, like, it's the same smoke. 
You just gotta tweet him enough. He replies. He, he sees everything. That dude yeah. is a professional and, troll. And he's a and he's a garbage rapper and all that stuff. Straight <laughs> smoke, whatever he want to hear, he you can hear right here. Like CJ's a straight goofy, and he's not good at football. Shout out to Mooney for really putting the brakes on that boy. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 lucky they didn't lose that game because a lot of the, he did get this touchdown scored on him. The yeah. only touchdown we had was on him. So. That that could have potentially been an all time great Twitter moment for the Saints, but it wasn't. professional troll man. Y'all anyway. can't y'all can't be feeding trolls. Just let them go. Wrap, wrap this thing up, Patty. Talk to himself. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. Um, uh, going into Falcons hate week. Do everything you can to put all that bad juju on them. If you believe in voodoo, I'm not going down that route. That's really scary. But you know, do your thing. Uh, <laughs> that's it until next week uh i'm at the patty v we got at big easy nation we got at the day rainy we got my at miles boudreau spelled exactly like it sounds uh follow us everywhere <laughs> follow at being the know all that miles stuff. With a y miles with a y yeah very yeah. important that's it who that